Luke 11, 33. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand, that those who come in may see the light. Now this verse actually ties in with verse 13. The chapter begins by the disciples asking Jesus to teach them to pray. And as he is teaching them concerning prayer, he gives them an illustration of a father if his son asks for bread, he will not give him a stone and all. And how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? So our prayer and asking God for the Holy Spirit. So verse 13, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? Now after that, he was interrupted in his teaching by a man who was possessed by a demon. Jesus cast the demon out, which then created a controversy. As some of them said that he was doing that by the power of Beelzebub. And so Jesus talked to them a little bit about that and then spoke to them about spirit possession. And while he was speaking these things, again he was interrupted by a woman who was saying, Blessed uh, is the womb that bore you and the uh, breast from which you nursed. And Jesus said, No, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. And uh, then he rebuked them uh, because they were seeking a sign and saying that it was a wicked and an adulterous generation. Now, having taken care of these uh, disturbances or distractions, he comes back to the main point that he was teaching upon, and that is the subject of prayer and the Father giving the Holy Spirit to those that ask him. And in that light, he said, No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand, that those who come in may see the light. Now, back in chapter 8, uh, verse 16, Jesus said pretty much the same thing. And thus we sort of, we say, hey, I've heard that before. Yes, we have, 816. No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light. So, uh, the same allegory is used by Jesus there in the 8th chapter. In the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, uh, verse 15, he also uses the same allegory about uh, you don't hide a candle under a bushel, but you put it on a candlestick that it might give light to all that are in the house. So the same allegory, a lamp is lit, not to be covered or to be hid. The purpose of a lamp being lit is to lighten the house so that people who come in uh, can see. But it's interesting that as he interprets the allegory in each place, there was a different interpretation. In Matthew's gospel, where he says you don't put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, he interpreted that as then let your light so shine before men that when they see your good works, they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. So how that we are the light of the world. We are not to cover the light. We're not to try to hide the light. We're to let the light shine that others around us may glorify God through the light of God's love that comes forth from us. In the 8th chapter here in the Gospel of Luke, as Jesus there uh, applies the allegory, he said, verse 18, Therefore take heed how you hear. For whoever has, to him more will be given. Whoever does not have, uh, that will be taken away, even that which he seems to have. So he makes the allegory of the light. You don't put it under a bushel, under the bed. You put it on a lampstand. And so be careful how you hear the word. 
Now, in this allegory, same allegory, but now a third interpretation by Jesus. And in this allegory, he interprets it as be careful of what you see. And he makes the allegory not to the hearing, the eyes, but now to the, I mean, to the ears and the hearing, but now he makes the interpretation to the eyes and your seeing. Uh, so it is interesting, he uses the same allegory, but he gives three different shades of light to the one allegory. And then he goes on to say, the lamp of the body is the eye. And if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. The eye has been called the gateway to the soul. And what we see has a tremendous effect upon our attitudes and upon our thought patterns. And Jesus is emphasizing the importance of seeing only those things that will contribute to a spiritually healthy life. Your eye being good. You know, seeing the beauty of God's creation is such an edifying experience. When I was out there in Amban, I saw the beautiful streams, I saw the flowering trees, I saw the fabulous jungles and the waterfalls that were around through the area. And, and you just think of the, of the glory of God's creation. Your eye being good, beholding the glory of God, beholding the works of God, seeing these beautiful, beautiful works of God. Looking at a sunset, how edifying it is, how beautiful it is just to sit there and, and absorb it as you see the colors and especially if you can look at it and watch the pounding surf and see the sky as it colors and just a, a, it's, it's a beautiful thing there's so much beauty for us to behold why would we want to look upon filth when God has created so much beauty and if your eye is good then your whole body is full of light and thus we need to keep our eyes focused on the things of God. But if your eye is evil, then your whole body will be full of darkness. The eye is the gateway into your body, into your mind, into your soul. Now, there's a big debate today among the sociologists as to whether or not pornography is a contributing factor to sexual crime. You'll find that the debate is among the sociologists. It isn't among the police officers that have to investigate the crimes. The police officers will tell you that whenever they come against some of these bizarre sexual crimes, sexual abuse crimes, child abuse crimes, and things of this nature, they invariably will find reams of filthy material. A man who is a pedophile will have all kinds of magazines that deal with the subject and with little boys nude and so forth. And, and a person who has these various sexual aberrations will invariably be in possession of sexually explicit kind of magazines. So as far as the police officers are concerned, there's no question that these magazines depicting this kind of stuff are contributing to the disease, the social disease that we have. Little boys giggling, looking at the pictures of nude women in Playboy and, and having, you know, the giggling times. They know that those pictures are sexual arou sexually arousing. It's only these stupid PhDs with their sociology degree that, you know, question whether or not, you know, it really arouses someone sexually. You wonder what kind of people they are. Uh, 
not normal. Uh, but the thing is, what you see is molding your life. If, if you turn to that kind of stuff, if you're looking at that kind of stuff, that is the thing, as, as Jesus said, and Jesus said it very clearly. If your eye is, is bad, if your eye is evil, then your whole body is going to be filled with darkness. It's so important that you not be looking at these things. It's so important that you not be looking at X-rated, R-rated kind of movies. I am appalled at what people uh, allow within their homes. People who are purchasing some of these channels on cable uh, with uh, the kind of movies that are shown. I wouldn't have that stuff in my house. I wouldn't watch that kind of stuff. Because if your eye is evil, then your whole body is going to be filled with darkness. You can't get away from it. What a man sows, that he's also going to reap. And not only is the lamp the ear, and not only are you affected by the things that you hear, but you're also affected by the things that you see. And if the light, the eye, is evil, the lamp into your soul is evil, you're looking at these evil things, then it's going to have its effect upon you and you're going to reap that and your body be, will be filled with darkness. Take heed, he said, that the light in you is not darkness. Now, Jesus used again in Matthew 6 somewhat the same figure uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, he used it twice in the fifth chapter, uh, but then also in chapter 6. Um, and there he uh, declares, um, You are the light of the world, verse 14. A city, oh, that's five, beg your pardon, in chapter 6. Um, verse 22, The lamp of the body is the eye. Saying the same thing. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Same, same thing. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, then how great is that darkness? The light, your eye, if that's darkness, then how great is that darkness that you're in? Because that's the light. That's, that's the, the thing that illuminates your soul. If your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. If the whole input into your life is spiritual, is positive, is good, then how great is that light that shines forth from your life? The importance, the importance of what we see. Now, again, we said that this was tied with verse 13. I'd like to show you the tie. In verse 13, he talks about our Father giving the Holy Spirit to those that ask him. Later on, in John's Gospel, he said, Now I'm going to pray the Father to give to you another comforter, even the Spirit of truth. So first of all, he says, the Holy Spirit is given to you who ask him. But then he said, I'm going to ask the Father for you. For the Holy Spirit for you. He's given to you who ask, but I'm going to ask for you. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, even the Spirit of truth, that he may abide with you forever. 
And then later on, he said, now wait in Jerusalem. And that he would send the Holy Spirit to them. Wait in Jerusalem, or tarry you in Jerusalem. And I will send the Holy Spirit to you. So I'll pray the Father, and now he is saying, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. Now, when the Holy Spirit came upon the church on the day of Pentecost, Peter, in explaining this phenomena to the people, said concerning Jesus, Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. So he's ascended to the Father, he's received this gift, and now he's poured out this Holy Spirit upon you. And you see and you hear now uh, the work of the Holy Spirit uh, as the result of Jesus having ascended to the Father. Now Paul tells us then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, Neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But, he said, the Holy Spirit has revealed them, or God has re revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Now, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? And those that have received the Holy Spirit, what is the effect? The Holy Spirit then helps you to see the truths of God. Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, it hath, hasn't entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those that love them, but God's revealed them to us by the Spirit. So that eye, being full of light, is the eye that is attuned to the Spirit. It is that spiritual perception. It is that, it is that ability to see the things of the Spirit, that gift of God in giving us the Holy Spirit through Him, the illumination of the things of God and of the Word of God. It's always to me fascinating to Talk with people who have just been born again by the Spirit and to hear their witness. So often they will say, you know, I started reading the Bible and for the first time it made sense. And I've had people say, well, I've read the Bible. It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. That's because it takes the Holy Spirit to bring light and understanding even to God's Word. No man can understand the things of the Spirit, neither can he, or the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit, neither can he know them. They are spiritually discerned. So the Father will give the Holy Spirit to those that ask Him. When God has given to you the Holy Spirit, the, the result of the possessing of the Spirit in your life is that spiritual perception, the spiritual illumination, the Spirit revealing to you the things of God so that now you can see, now you can understand what man, apart from the Spirit, cannot see, cannot know. The things that God has for those who love Him, these things that are discerned by the Spirit. So when Jesus starts talking about your eye being filled with light, he's talking then about the eye that is now able to see as the result of the work of the Holy Spirit revealing the things of God, opening to us the truths of God. Now your whole body becomes affected by what you see and by what you hear. And if you are living after the flesh 
and you are looking at those things that stimulate the flesh or listening to those things of the flesh. And you are walking in darkness. Don't deceive yourself. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And if you're sowing to your flesh by what you see and by what you hear, if you're feeding the flesh, then you are walking in darkness. You are not walking in the light. John tells us that if a man says he has fellowship with God and yet he's walking in darkness, that man is lying. He's not telling the truth. Paul said, what fellowship hath light with darkness? In enumerating the works of the flesh, in Galatians 5, Paul concludes... And we know that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. We better take note of that. We better listen. We better look at that list of the works of the flesh. And don't think that I'm an exception. Or my case is an exception. If you close your eyes to the truth, then you are walking in darkness. You do not have fellowship with God. And how great is that darkness that is in you? And the tragedy is, is that a person doesn't realize it because it's dark they can't see. Now, it's an interesting thing. If the room is dark, even though you have eyes, you can't see. Because the room is dark. If the room is light and you're blind, you can't see. So the God of this world has blinded their eyes. And there it is, but they can't see it because they're blind. Or the darkness is so great within that even having eyes they do not see. And that's what Jesus said, having eyes they see not, ears they hear not. Lest at any time they would see with their eyes and hear with their ears and be converted. And that was the condition of the people at that time that he was talking to. Deceived. So, if your eyes are open to the Spirit and by the Spirit, then your whole life is full of light. As when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. Now, the effect of light is that of revealing. The effect of the light of God's Spirit within your life is, is revealing those things that are there that are not pleasing to God. But you see, I can be out of tune. I can be out of touch. My heart can be turned towards things of evil because of what I've been looking, what I've been hearing. And, and I can't see what's happening. I can't see the realities around me. How important it is then that the light that is in us, our eyes, be spiritually attuned, be open by the Spirit that I can see the truth and walk in the truth. And so this, Jesus sort of ends then this particular um, section of chapter 11. Now we move uh, from this uh, to an invitation by a Pharisee to come and eat at his house. And Jesus was one who loved to eat with people. And even though it was a Pharisee inviting him, he would never turn down an invitation to eat. And so uh, we'll find him going next week to the house of the Pharisee to eat and the things that transpired there. Uh, didn't he say in, in uh, Revelation 3.21, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I'll come in and have supper with him. <laughs> loves to eat with people. He loves to eat with you. He wants to sit down and just share with you. 
in the fellowship around the table. Just opening the door is all that's necessary. Father, we thank you for that light that has been given to us by the Holy Spirit. Causing us to see things that before were unseen by us because of the darkness. But now able to see, Lord, so clearly as your Spirit has opened our hearts to the truth. Oh, Lord, may we be very careful. May we take heed. that the light that is in us be good rather than evil, that our bodies might be filled with light rather than darkness. In Jesus' name.